Hi everybody, thank you for joining me. In this video, we are simply going to have a look at what happens when we are given a formula which has one subject and we are asked to rearrange it so that another variable becomes the subject. I hope you find this useful. The first thing we need to understand here is what we mean when we're talking about the subject of a formula. We'll take a look at these two formulas here. The first one, y equals 2x minus 8. So in fact, quite simply, what this formula is telling us is what y is equal to. It's all about y. Therefore, y is the subject. In the bottom one, x equals y minus 5 over 8. Again, it's telling us all about x and what it is equal to. Therefore, x is the subject. So concentrating on this first formula, if y is the subject and we are asked to change that, then with a question like that, it would simply say make x the subject. So what it's asking us to do is to move around the equation to rearrange it so that when we are finished rather than saying y equals something we need it to end up as x equals something. If you're already familiar with solving equations by rearranging then this will feel familiar to you as the process is almost exactly the same. We need to use bid mass backwards for this process because in order to move things around we have to make sure we follow the correct order. Therefore we're going to move any subtractions and additions first, then multiplications and divisions and then the indices and the brackets. So if we take a look at this particular example, let's rewrite it out. We are starting with y equals 2x minus 8. So we need to be in a position where x is on one side of the equation and everything else is on the other. That way x becomes the subject. So we need to move the 8 and we need to move the 2. So we're going to do that one step at a time following the order of operations. And it tells us that subtractions and additions go first. So I'm going to move the 8. The rule is if you move something from one side of an equation to the other, it changes to its opposite function. So here I'm moving a minus 8. I am going to move that across the other side of the equal sign. And in doing so, it becomes a plus 8. And that is the first step that we need to take. Now I'm going to move the 2 and the same rules apply. The 2 is now going to go to the other side. Again, at the moment this is a multiply by 2. It's 2 times x, therefore when it moves to the other side it becomes a divide by 2. So now we have a situation where we have x equals y plus 8 over 2. At the moment it's written the other way around. To make it look better simply swap the sides so we have x equals y plus 8 over 2. Now that we have x on one side and everything else on the other we've done what the question asked us to do. We have now made x the subject. Just as an additional note on this, you'll notice that I am rearranging formula by moving things physically from side to side. I know some teachers do this by actually performing the same function to both sides of an equation. If that's the method that you are familiar with, there is no problem. It is equally valid. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. Here we have m equals n over 4 minus 7 so that m is currently the subject we need to rearrange it so that n becomes the subject so again we're going to move things one at a time the first thing if we are following the backward bit mass tells us has to be the minus 7 so remembering that it is a minus 7 when it moves to the other side it has to become a plus 7 so we have for our second line m plus 7 equals n over 4. Now we're going to move the 4. We need to be careful here because this 4 
is a divide by four. It is dividing everything on this side. So when we move it across to the other side, it's going to become a multiple. It has to be a multiple of everything that's on the side here. So we have the m plus seven. In order to make sure that we are multiplying by everything, it needs to go on the outside of a bracket to show that it is multiplying by both the m and the seven. In this case, we have n left. So turn it round, n equals four m plus seven. Now here I've written the same formula down twice and that's because I'm going to solve this in two different ways. I really want to show that provided you follow an accepted mathematical process, you can come to a solution using different methods. So it's x equals 4y plus 3 and I want to make y the subject. So if we consider the bid mass backwards, and let's write it here to remind ourselves. We know that we have to do subtraction and addition first. We have to do a multiplication and division next, and then indices, and finally brackets. Therefore, using this method, we would be leaving the brackets last. We would be moving the four. So that's what I'm going to do. The four is a multiply at the moment. It's multiplying everything on the right hand side. So if I move it across, it's going to become a divide. So I end up with x divided by four equals. Now all I have left here is y plus three. There is nothing on the outside of the brackets to multiply them by. So I can simply write y plus three. The next stage then is going to be to move the three to the other side. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. X divided by four minus three equals Y. Turn that around. Y equals X over four minus three. That is a correct answer. Now let's look at the other side. It may well be whilst you are looking at this problem that you realize that one possibility is to actually change the right hand side by expanding the brackets. That is a perfectly acceptable procedure. So let's do it that way. So we're going to leave the X there on its own for a moment. We're going to expand the brackets. So that will become four Y, four times Y plus four times three is 12. Now let's move things around. First of all, using the rules that we have, the plus 12 is going to go to the other side. So I'm going to have x minus 12 equals 4y. The last thing I'm going to move is the 4. At the moment, it's multiplying. So when it gets to the other side, it has to be a divide. So I have the x minus 12 that has got to be divided by 4 equals y. So I now have the answer y equals x minus 12 over 4. That is a correct answer. Now you are looking at the two answers and saying well they seem different but actually all that is happening here is that on the right hand side we have x over 4 minus 12 over 4. And that would leave you with x over 4 minus 12 over 4 is minus 3. So in fact, although the two answers look different, they are exactly the same, just written in a slightly different format and either is acceptable. And that just about covers it. I hope that last example gave you some confidence in that if you are looking at a question and you're not quite sure how to proceed, if you can see a valid algebraic method, expanding a bracket or rearranging the formula, then go for it. Usually you'll find your way to the solution. If that has been useful, please do subscribe to my channel, look at some of my other videos and hopefully I will see you there. Thank you.